Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Subjit Starch and Chemicals Limited Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Aman Setia. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Setia. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I, Aman Setia, Vice President, Finance and Company Secretary of the Subjit Stars, would like to extend a cordial welcome on behalf of the Subjit Group for joining us on the con call on FY24 results. Dear friends, while we appreciate your time and patience for remaining invested with us for long, we promise all of our current and potential investors that we are a company which is not only committed to the operational and financial performance, but also the transparency and best practices front. Regarding performance in FY24, I hope everyone had an opportunity to go through the financial results and the press release which have been uploaded on the stock exchange. However, I would like to reproduce some key figures. And our net sales at 1370.86 crores during FY24 against 1435.25 crores in FY23. A beta for the year is 134 crores versus 145 crores in FY23. The profit before tax stood at 77 crores against 92 the corresponding previous year and the profit after tax is 55.62 crores against 70 crores in the previous financial year. The Q4 FY24 sales stood at 368 crores with a beta at 33 crores and PAD at 11.46 crores. Though the volumes of our production and sales were higher as compared to the last year, the sales values and the margins were affected due to pricing pressure on some of our key finished products owing to low demand from some sectors. On financial front, our long-term debt has reduced to about 83 crores with a very low debt equity ratio of 0.16. Today, from management side, we have Mr. Dheera Sarana, Senior VP and CEO, and Mr. Bhavdeep Sarana, Senior VP and CEO of the company. Now, I hand over to Mr. Dheera Sarana to give a brief about the company. Thank you. Good morning. I welcome all the things of the call. For the new investors, I wish to add here that Subjit is an agro-processing company that specializes in the production of starch and its derivatives. With a rich history and as one of India's oldest and largest starch producers, Subjit has forged enduring partnerships with major brands and end users. We have a diverse product portfolio catering to a wide spectrum of industries such as food and beverage, paper and board, personal care and pharmaceuticals, textile, FMCG, animal and pet foods. As the dynamics of world and industry are changing fast and each year comes with new challenges, we at Subji strive to find the best opportunity during such challenges. As Mr. Setia mentioned, Pressure remained on the prices of some of our high-value finished goods last year owing to lower demand from some key sectors. However, now a tick in demand is being reported, especially in the FNCG sector, and it is expected that our high-value products will take charge of our sales and profits during the running year. Further, with the growing awareness of nutritive and quality food uh, by uh, by the health conscious consumers, the demand for new varieties and superior quality food will continue to rise. And we believe that the starch industry is going to benefit as our products directly find place in such food items. A key element of our strategy is the diversification of our product mix. We aim to provide superior solutions that meet the specific requirements of different market segments. This approach not only strengthens our customer relationships, but also drives higher margins and revenue growth. 
Now I would like to hand over to Mr. Bhagwit Sardana to share more details. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As we discuss the financial and operational performance of Q4 and the full fiscal year ending FY24, it is clear that our company has demonstrated remarkable adaptability and resilience in a very changing environment. Despite facing pricing pressure and soft demand from key industries such as FMCG and pharma, we managed to achieve higher sales volumes compared to the previous year. This achievement is a testament to our strategic agility and operational excellence. While our beta and profit margins were impacted by low sales of high-value products, we are optimistic about the future. We anticipate that the resurgence of high-value products will significantly change and add to our sales growth in the coming quarters. This rebound is expected to drive both growth and profitability as we continue to implement our strategic initiatives and capitalize on market opportunities. Our growth initiatives are progressing well, with a notable increase in capacity expansion to be commercialized in the coming months. This expansion is a critical component of our growth strategy, enabling us to meet increasing demand and strengthening our market position. Additionally, we are actively exploring both greenfield and brownfield expansion opportunities. These expansions will be pursued based on thorough internal assessments and prevailing market dynamics, ensuring that we make informed and strategic investment decisions. Our unwavering commitment to enhancing our product portfolio and advancing our operating margins remains steadfast. We are prioritizing higher capacity utilization. We strive for optimal performance, maximizing operational efficiency and boosting productivity across our operation. Looking ahead, we are enthusiastic about the prospects that lie before us. Our strategic initiatives are not just about growth, but building a sustainable and profitable future for our team. In conclusion, the year FY24 has been a period of significant achievements, strategic and advancements for our company. Despite the challenges, we have shown that we can adapt and rise. We remain committed to executing our strategies effectively, leveraging our strengths and capitalizing on new opportunities. We are confident that our focused approach and strategic initiatives, we will continue to achieve our goals and deliver a long-term value to our stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you very much. Amen. Yeah. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Yoganj Jaswani from Metal Analytics. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning to you all. Uh, I hope I'm audible, sir. Uh, slightly. Could you speak a little bit more clearly? Sure. Uh, is this better? A bit, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, sir, uh, just one question around your inventory. So, uh, if we look at the closing inventory, it is reasonably high compared to what is our usual trend. So, any specific reason for that or is there any one-off into it? Uh, we, it is how we look at the raw material situation vis-a-vis -vis multiple uh, factors in the market. Um, we carry, we carry inventory uh, to ensure continuity and operations. If we see uh, the incoming drop, if it is low or it feels that there would be a uh, increase in uh, the pricing because of uh, uh, some other factor. So the company has a decision to carry more inventory uh, at that particular point in time. Okay, uh, but nothing of the sort that uh, some bit of shipment was delayed uh, uh, in Q. No, not not at all, not at all. 
ओके सो सर आउट ऑफ दिस इन्वेंट्री देन इज इट पॉसिबल टू शेयर वॉट वुड बी द रॉ मटीरियल इन्वेंट्री एंड हाउ मच वुड बी द फिनिश गुड्स आउट ऑफ द टू थर्टी करोर्स मोस्टली इट इज रॉ मटीरियल वी टेंड टू बी लाइट एज अ स्ट्रैटेजी ऑन फिनिश गुड्स unless uh, it's a strategic decision where a shipment uh, is is being planned or we see there is going to be a price difference uh, but uh, you could assume that uh, more than uh, more than 60% is raw material okay understood and so uh, given your view on inventory then is it safe to assume that in next couple of quarters we are expecting probably better margin since uh, and product prices might also rise given the higher raw material uh, prices expectation that is our hope sorry that is our hope okay uh, got it so and sir uh, just one clarification on the uh, capacity expansion that you were alluding to in your opening remarks uh, yes. how much is the uh, addition in capacity in volume terms if you could just uh, share that it would be uh, uh, close to a 400 ton uh, capacity expression across uh, multiple units across various product lines um, and uh, we are about a few months away from completing it at all uh, all the locations where the work is going on and uh, based on 1600 uh, current uh, capacity installed uh, this 400 takes us to 2000 tons per day of mini crushing plus uh, an enhancement in uh, certain product lines got it so i should uh, that's it for my side thank you and all the best to you thank you thank you next question is from the line of dr arun sharma and individual investor please go ahead hello yes sir hey good morning sir thanks for the opportunity Yes, yes, Dr. Sharma. Uh, yes, sir. First question is: from, from last one year, we are saying that the capacity would be 1600 to 2000, but it has still not materialized. Can you give a timeline that by when it would be materialized? So, uh, we were supposed to have. Uh, we have always been saying that it would be uh, 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 commercialized uh, that we would be ready. in fy 24 25 we maintain that we have been uh, telling all our stakeholders that we are working on it uh, we continue to say that uh, and we believe the firm believes that it will be in fy 24 25 but definitely uh, we are trying uh, you know because of elections in various uh, phases across uh, different states at different times uh, certain construction work got delayed etc etc so we are at the final stages Uh, over the next 2 uh, to 3 months uh, i expect that uh, most of the expansion work would be completed uh, and uh, in q4 we would uh, start to seeing uh, some results of it okay sir as and my second question is sir that 10 to 12 acre land that company was planning to sell a home company is expecting how much money is the company expecting to gather from that so the land uh, you are listing is our own land uh like we say that uh, we have mentioned in the past that uh, the company the this land was uh, acquired uh, through um, uh, in 1943 and then subsequently small parcels were added to it uh, our exploring of uh, various pricing because it is in the heart of the city in fagwara town Uh, it is in for what now it has multiple roads so the various benchmarking of uh, pricing is different on each road so with government state government policies of uh, uh, circle rates etc so there are multiple rates so pr- price finding is going on and when we get a firm offer we would be sharing it with all our stakeholders also sir, sir any ballpark idea that it would be 100 crore 120 crore approximate idea i i wish it is uh, i wish it is i can say that but we are not at that stage to make a even a figure was uh, uh, price finding for uh, a land which has multiple crore 
uh, and multiple skill plates around is a bit complicated. So, sir, um, share with us get any idea, na? That is more than just crore or less. What is the company expecting? Because you are doing the process. Doctor, Doctor Shah, the range is the range of uh, uh, of pricing can vary from 50 crores to 100 crores. Now, if I give a if I give a commitment, uh, if I give a commitment uh, or or make a statement, it will be very irresponsible of me. Sir, we only want to know the range, 100 to 150, 100 to 150. Sir, if someone says 50, someone says 100, someone says uh, 50, then you know it is not for me to uh, give a comment. So until there is clarity on what circle rate will be, uh, when the you know the state government uh, is, has also been in busy uh, in formulating some uh, policies on uh, land pricing, etc. So we are also waiting for that. So there is clarity to a, pers- a potential investor. So they also then do their business on it. Uh, and they can make make an offer uh, to the company for it. Sir, uh, would it be done in a year or a year's time? I uh, uh, pass. Yeah, I know. Even we are also, uh, since, we, uh, you know, we are not located in NCR or Tri-City, Mohali area. Uh, so, uh, Fagwara is uh, a small industrial town. Uh, so, a different type of customer here would be required. Uh, and uh, we are marketing uh, uh, through the local channels accordingly. Sir, and the last question is, uh, as we discussed the management of Dabur and FCG, they are quite positive on the rural, rural demand. Do we see these implications in the company? Yeah, yeah. So, I am very happy, Dr. Sharma, that you are following uh, FMCG because the last four quarters, FMCG has been very subdued. Now only they are starting to say that there has been green shoots uh, in their rural demand, and uh, it will look up. So, yes. if they look up, you will also look up. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sam. Next question is from the line of Harsha from Dimensional Securities. Please proceed. Hi. Good morning, sir. Just wanted to, just wanted to get an idea uh, for the year that went by FY24. What what has been the volume growth for industry and then for Sujit uh, starch? I mean, have we gained uh, market share? I mean, how has the industry and uh, versus Sujit performed? I would say uh, status quo uh, Asha has been maintained. I will not tell, uh, advise, uh, sorry, share how much we have grown. Uh, but um, uh, de- definitely uh, uh, our uh, growth has been there and uh, going forward, the volume growth will continue increasing over the next uh, few years until the uh, full capacity utilization of the recent expansion work underway gets utilized. As far as to give you a, a better analysis of the picture, uh, uh, the every uh, the starch industry this year has witnessed many changes uh, and it largely swings in raw material. And the swings in raw material pricing uh, from dips of uh, 10% to highs of uh, 15% from, uh, I'm talking about, uh, uh, let's say, if, the, if I take a base price of 22 rupees, uh, so we've seen big fluctuation because of ethanol coming in. And because of, uh, like previous uh, caller mentioned, FNCG uptick, uh, is being observed by certain uh, large FMCG players. Last four quarters, it's been pretty subdued by the FM, FMCG majors and the statements by Nestle or, or Dabur, etc., etc. HUL um, mirror that. Um, and uh, But as a company, we have grown in volumes uh, and I'm hopeful that uh, we would grow more in volumes, both uh, in volumes and uh, sales figures uh, in rupee terms. So, quite hopeful for that. Okay. And could you help us help us with average uh, raw material procurement price, maize price for Q4, and uh, where does the price stand today? See, pricing has been uh, very uh, elastic. You know, uh, Q4, uh, if you look at the financial year uh, Q4, uh, 
starting from 1st of jan you know when the crop of the kharif crop is literally over or at its uh, a fag end of uh, arrival or peak arrival uh, going towards uh, uh, 31st march is uh, there is no crop so pricing can go as high as 25 25 50 and in certain parts of the country and it, it could be at 22 to 23 rupees in the producing areas where there is stock at the local level so and today it uh, bihar uh, which is the rabi crop which comes end of april first week of may uh, the crop started uh, at you know 19 to 21 rupees in the in that range but today ex bihar uh, one cannot get uh, uh, ex bihar at 22 and a half 23 rupees so that would mean uh, up to 25 rupees in certain consuming areas okay 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 that that gives a fair idea uh, and coming to volume growth going ahead uh, of course fi 25 24 has been quite uh, subdued for the fmcg companies but just to get a fair idea if we talk about next 3 uh, to 4 years so if the volume growth for fmcg would be around 4 to 6% because that is what the bull case uh, assumption is for for the mature fmcg industry volume growth somewhere between 4 to 6 7% then where do we see volume growth for subji if, if we talk about a fairly long term 3 to 4 year period that just single cycles and everything see i uh, we are looking at 10% growth uh, going forward uh, into the volumes we are uh, we are you know trying for a 10% more um, you know it, it all depends on how fast our uh, uh, expansion work happens but uh, let's say fy uh, 25 26 uh, i would say uh, 10% looks reasonable and this year uh, it could be a challenge uh, but uh, i think we are working on it uh, we have certain ideas which we need to do which we are implementing so we are not only looking at overall capacity but we are incrementally looking at certain product enhancements where that product growth could be there so if uh, fmcg is going you know buying uh, xyz products from us and if they are in talks with us uh, for you know long term supply and a, uh, let's say a medium term horizon like you mentioned is the uh, 4 to 5 years maybe 6 years so we are working with them and seeing their uh, capacity expansion plans and we implemented our capacity expansion plans to service them so certain products should grow uh while uh, you know the overall maize grinding could be uh, in the 5 to 10 percent range why you know this is all before we set up a new plant got it got it and sir in terms of gross margins so i mean if we if we look two to three years back we were at somewhere around 37 38 percent uh and now we are at around 31% so is it fair to assume that in terms of gross margin we are at the bottom and from here on we will we will be uh, given that we are moving towards value added product and the pricing environment is slightly improving so is it fair to assume that uh, the gross margin is bottomed out from these levels see it's our it's our effort to move towards uh, more value added sales it's been a consistent effort to move towards value added sales uh but you know then i always uh, on these calls i always mention that sometimes uh, starch gives a better margin so uh, what we are doing consciously is uh, building capacity of the products uh, rather than just uh, blindly adding maize grinding uh, so we can chop and change our product mix as the market changes okay and okay. that that all to increase our margin so uh, our effort is to uh, now to increase the margin so you know uh, i i think i have answered your question very clearly yes yes you have and sir uh, what would be the power cost for fi24 because i believe in fi23 it was somewhere around 154 155 crore almost uh, 10 or 11% of our sales so where do we stand in fi24 and going ahead do we expect this this cost to uh as a percentage of sales to to come down a bit so i it is it is similar but it is um, marginally lower uh, let's say uh, uh, 
it, it is marginally lower. Uh, I would say uh, by a couple of percentage points. Um, but uh, going forward, when we that's why we are saying that you know when we expand our capacity uh, in a more significant way, when we are looking at greenfield and brownfield, then this element would go down even more, and we would be in line with uh, you know a larger, more efficient, uh, relatively more efficient uh, standalone unit. Um, in anywhere in in the world. Got it. Got it. That was helpful. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ronak Shah from Equator Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks, sir, for the opportunity. My question is regarding the uh, capacity expansion. So, as you explained that the there is recovery in the FMCG space and. Uh, you are witnessing some green shoots in that demand, but you and industry per se are uh, expanding very rapidly. So, which are the other key levers uh, uh, which you and industry is feeling that uh, will drive growth going ahead? See, this whole uh, reliance of uh, uh, making in India more product in India, uh, uh, PLI scheme was a, uh, a big push for uh, Indian products being food products being exported. Um, as global uh, challenges, uh, uh, as global challenges of supply chain and the China plus one for uh, ingredients, and you know uh, India being favorably placed in terms of uh, uh, both self growth within India and export led growth uh, to our neighboring countries. I think. Uh, all that emboldens uh, the start industry, including us, to add capacity at strategic locations, uh, and we grow our portfolio accordingly. Okay, got it, sir. My second question is regarding current in, uh, RM environment scenario. So, we are witnessing inflation in the prices of the maize. Uh, vis a vis the international prices of the starch and its derivatives are likely stable or on a lower side. So, how we are seeing the realization trend and the margins going ahead? See, uh, because the raw material pricing is uh, in India is unique because Indian maize is protected um, to a very large extent. Uh, Indian maize is a non-genetically modified maize, and therefore, if there is a, a outage, only similar type of grain can come. And Indian pricing is has always been traditionally higher than the uh, US, uh, US price or uh, Ukraine price or um, you know, Argentina price. But uh, as far as our products globally are concerned, we compete on uh, FOR providing and uh, due to efficiency in large plant and disruptions in uh, global supply chain um, and energy costs globally. Uh, Indian manufacturers, uh, as, they, as we increase our capacities, uh, we find it of value to capture additional markets. So that is what is happening in the industry, and uh, I see that trend to continue for a lot of media. Sir, so, so in uh, numbers, can you quantify is the current relation trend is sustainable, or we are ex expecting some uptick in this uh, trend? See. We are a nature dependent raw material driven business. The entire industry is. So, while I am quite confident that Indian export opportunity and domestic consumption in sectors such as FMCG, pharma, paper, and textile will continue as the country moves towards better growth. And the country moves towards, uh, uh, you know, our demographic uh, dividend of a young population uh, gets more and more into the workplace, either through big economy or through uh, formalized economy. And uh, I think post elections, uh, there is going to be a uh, energy put in into the economy by servicing people at the bottom of the pyramid. That will drive growth for our uh, our products. Now, what the margins will be, 
I can't say, but yes, definitely there is going to be good demand. And uh, as you can see from our margins and others in the industry, they are pretty much range bound. We see high 14%, 15%, but then uh, uh, during uh, conventional periods, we are 9, 10, 11%. So, so I expect the same, same kind of trend to continue. What will happen uh, six months down the line, I can't say, but yes, I think India is placed very well uh, for growth and uh, our company is hoping to capitalize on that. Got it, sir. So my last question is regarding, as recently you stated that you are uh, partnering with the FMCG player regarding their uh, fix or contractual lifting. Can you explain it a bit more in detail that how we are uh, uh, having arrangements in terms of the fixed contract lifting or and the, how we determine the price either on spot or fixed base? See, I did not say there is a fixed contract with this thing. We have relationships with FMCG. And we get to our contractors the pricing them. It could be a quarterly price, it could be a quantity contract. Uh, but, but when we work with them, they tell us what their growth plans are. And if they need a particular uh, product from us um, in a particular geography, and uh, we work with them because of the relationship built and the trust we have built over the years. Uh, they tell us on uh, in advance that, you know, in two years' time, we would be landing and we would. I uh, hope that uh, you are able to maintain your supply position of being uh, the majority supplier uh, and we expect the volume growth to be so and so. So we uh, either expand before they do uh, or we uh, uh, coincide with them as far as pricing is concerned. We negotiate as a, it's our company policy not to get into any fixed term, long term contracts which are forward looking. We negotiate on the day when they are ready to place an order of a certain quantity or for a certain period. Got it, sir. Got it, sir. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Deep Gandhi from Astute Investments. Please go ahead. Mr. Deep, your line is unmuted. Please proceed. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, my first question is around the uh, RM cost. So, has the industry made any representation to the government for allowing the import of uh, maize? Because I think in the past, whenever the prices have increased beyond certain point, government has allowed the import of maize, right? So, have, has the industry made any representation? See, this is an ongoing process. Uh, industry uh, and we are, uh, you know, we are very lucky that uh, uh, the government has, uh, in the recent past, uh, within the last six months, so allowed imports uh, um, and the non-GM imports uh, did come into India. Uh, has benefited uh, certain manufacturers and uh, other stakeholders uh, of the maize industry, like the poultry and feed players who were based near the ports. Uh, uh, the pressure of uh, maize at the going areas, at the traditional maize growing areas. So the relationship uh, between industry and government um, is, I think, fantastic, uh, and government is real to the situation. Uh, government doesn't want us. So can you say your voice is breaking, sir? Yeah. So I'm saying there is no problem as far as uh, getting maize to import in the country. Uh, any application ma being made, it, it's a regular affair, no? And uh, until the domestic maize crop does not significantly increase, government is open to allowing uh, maize non-GM maize uh, for specific users in the starch industry or the poultry industry. Okay, sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Jasmine Kaur from Fortuna Investments Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good morning, sir. Uh, am I audible? Uh, yes, your voice is very really low. Uh, no, okay. Uh, is it is it better now? 
Yeah, yes, it is better. Please give your question. Okay, uh, sir, uh, uh, I wanted to know what is the capacity utilization for SI twenty four that you could achieve. Uh, you are uh, close eighty five percent. You know, eighty three to eighty five percent is in at that level and. Uh, Okay, eighty-three to eighty-five percent. Okay. Uh, 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 also, sir, you said uh, about the greenfield capex or a brownfield capex that uh, you would be looking uh, for. Uh, uh, could you give us a bit on the on the size that you are thinking of uh, and the capital outlay uh, that uh, you are thinking of? Very broad estimates are also fine because I understand that this would still be at the drawing board stage. But yeah, in terms so of the time timelines and capital outlay, uh, if you can tell us. See, uh, Jagmeeji, uh, I uh, you would be looking at a uh, thousand tons. Uh, it could be twelve hundred. It could be thousand. Uh, it, it all depends on uh, what final products we add uh, alongside it. So the cost of a uh, plant uh, would depend on a the location and the type of products we need to site at that location. That would raise the uh, uh, the price. It, I would say it would be safe to assume, uh, looking at uh, competition who have uh, recently uh, partially uh, commissioned their plants uh, with single products. That, uh, I think they spent uh, close to 200 crores. So. Uh, uh, we would be also range, but our uh, total capex would be dependent on uh, what we uh, uh, decide on the product mix. Again, that is dependent on the location we go. To. Okay, okay. And uh, so, in terms of the timeline, I mean, are we looking at next year, next financial year for this? Because this year, you are the um, the uh, the other 400 metric tons is going to come up. So, are we going to start work on this from next year onwards? See, uh, logically what you are saying uh, may mean that, uh, but I am not ruling out the possibility uh, that in case an opportunity uh, comes, we don't want to let go or we feel uh, confident, uh, we may look at it in Q4 uh, this year also. But, uh, La, since this is going to be a very large project, we want to do our due diligence and we want to take our time. You know, we can't take a decision offhandedly uh, without doing multiple surveys and doing a process of uh, uh, going through a process of decision making and ruling out possibilities. Sure, sure. And uh, and so in terms of uh, uh, see the the long term debt has quite significantly come down over the past few years uh, from the time you did your last paper. Um So I mean this is also going to run down further, and I think there is uh, you know a fair amount of cash which is being built up on the balance sheet. Uh, I mean you can correct me, but I would assume in the range of about next 80 to 100 crores. Uh, so what is the comfortable debt level that uh, you are looking at when you embark on this uh, next phase of expansion? Uh, so you know how can I look at the debt position for the company, let's say in the coming two years time frame? See, uh, our our company's uh, strategy has always been to keep a very uh, uh, Comfortable debt to equity uh, position. You know, right now we are less than I think 0.17. Also, I think last Q3 we were 0.17. We were even lower than that. Uh, uh, 1.5, 1.1516. So uh, naturally, uh, long-term debt would get retired. Uh, this financial debt means can easily go to 0.5, 0.6 again uh, uh, when we need to. Answering the last question, uh, the company has a present debt to equity ratio of uh, 0.16. Uh, we can safely go up and add to it, and uh, until and we would be retiring more debt uh, this this year, and uh, adding to our reserves uh, through company's uh, regular operations. So uh, any project which we do, 
uh, would be commissioned between uh, 24 to 30 months. That would be our target, ideally. Depend, you know, uh, final timeline would be dependent on the product mix. So, uh, you know, there would be significant contribution from internal resources, and we can pick and choose how much debt we need to take. So, we have that flexibility, and of course, uh, we've been adding to our reserves, as you can see on our balance sheet. Sure, sure, sir. Um, uh, sir, uh, just one last thing uh, on the, uh, the the current 400 uh, new. Um, uh, how do you see the ramp up of this in terms of capacity utilization for uh, the part of the year that it will be operational uh, this year and uh, let's say next year? So how how in terms of uh, you know your visibility of demand from the various sectors? How do you see this ramp up uh, happening, given that currently you are at about 85 percent of the present capacity? So, you know, since your voice was not very audible, but I think I got the gist of your question. Uh, I am quite confident of further volume growth this year. And as uh, while we uh, are uh, in the process of uh, uh, adding capacity of both maze grinding and product at various locations, so capacity enhancement in both products and maze grinding should happen this year and uh, towards, the latter, uh, towards the latter part. And uh, FY25-26, again, um, I am hopeful that uh, we would grow, uh, you know, maybe up to even 10% more uh, volume growth from the levels we, we will finish at 24-25. Uh, um, okay. Okay, so then, so that means that uh, the the enhanced capacity uh, for this to ramp up will take some time, um, because um, I mean um, you're saying about 10% volume growth. Uh, so, um, so we, we may really. look at about 80 85% not, not, not really. We are we are looking at, and we would see this is a. Uh, this is an expansion. So capacity utilization as a percentage terms uh, would be on the higher side. It will not be low. So, okay. and uh, we, we would, would expect uh, uh, some of it to come in in H2. Now, whether it comes in uh, what part of Q3 or uh, early Q4, you know, uh, we, are, uh, we are pushing for it to come as soon as possible. So, that will uh, give the right feeling. Sure, sure, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Urmi Khania from Robo Capital. Please proceed. Uh, good morning, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Uh, sir, since you are expecting good growth in volumes, uh, what is your growth outlook for revenues for the year FI25 and also FI26? See, uh, I can't comment on uh, what the pricing of maize will be. As you can see, that we, uh, as I mentioned, that we've grown in volumes uh, over last year and our top line has fallen. Uh, you know, it's primarily because of uh, pricing pressure and uh, changes in uh, uh, raw material pricing through the year. But safe to say that uh, if the current trend goes, that uh, to be very conservative, uh, maybe a 6 to 8 percent growth on uh, top line uh, can happen from the current levels. It can be more also, uh, you know, depending on how maize pricing behaves through the year. Okay, and uh, since you are adding capacity, is will that add to some more percentage uh, for FY26? We are hopeful. We are hopeful that uh, FY26 uh, will be a better year than FY25. And uh, again, uh, our effort in volume growth uh, will definitely be there, and I'm confident that that growth. Uh, will materialize as per our plans. Um, however, uh, what I cannot predict is how maize pricing uh, will be forward-looking beyond one season. Okay. Thank you so much. That's it. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sahil Vora from 
MNS Associates. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes, uh, sir. What kind of revenues are we expecting from this new plant in FY25? Uh, what kind of revenues and what can we expect? If you could please throw some light on that. So there is no new plant here setting up. I think you've uh, misheard uh, the conversation. Uh, we are expanding products and uh, expanding uh, capacities at, uh, at various locations of our existing locations. And as far as revenue growth is concerned, uh, uh, I mentioned in the previous to the previous caller, uh, we are hopeful, we are aiming for minimum uh, 5 to 6% uh, revenue growth, maybe more, uh, but there are various factors which affect it. So, uh, but volume growth is going to be there. Uh, uh, and top line, uh, the raw material will have a part to play in, in it for the rest of the year. Okay, sir. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, I'm also particularly interested in the other demand trends. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Sahil. Your voice is breaking. Hello. Am I audible now? Yes, you are audible. Please proceed. Yes, sir. I'm also particularly interested in understanding how the demand is shaping up the uh, demand trends in our key end-user industries across Europe and USA. Uh, I didn't understand the demand trend in the key industries and what about Europe and USA? Uh, how they are shaping up in our key end-user and industries over there? Uh, I can't comment on uh, uh, in detail on uh, what is happening in Europe and USA. Uh, but safe to say that uh, our global peers uh, are growing their business and uh, uh, from what we see in their uh, geographies, you know, I cannot comment on uh, micro environment of product wise in uh, uh, US and Europe because we are servicing the paper sector. Paper manufacturing has moved out to China. Uh, parts of Southeast Asia and uh, India is now playing catch up. Textile has moved out of there, so we are servicing those geographies and we are concentrating on those geographies. As far as uh, FMCG uh, products are concerned, uh, there, there could be a parallel between Europe and the uh, US. We are uh, moving on up the value chain in terms of quality uh, deliverables to our customers and we are working on global standards. So our uh, but as uh, India and uh, other places in Southeast Asia and, and Africa become global factories for the world, uh, the concentration is going to be on this side. So, I can't really comment on uh, your question beyond that. Okay, sir. Thank you for the detailed response. And uh, lastly, how do you anticipate the high-value products uh, will recharge our sales in the coming quarters? Uh, are there any strategies in place to drive growth in this segment? So your voice is very breaking, uh, uh, Mr. Sahil. Uh, can you please repeat the first part of your question? Yes, sir. How how do you uh, anticipate that the high-value products will recharge our sales in the coming quarter? So, we are hopeful that it will be positive. Uh, I've mentioned that uh, FMCG sector and the pa and certain uh, sales to the pharma sectors were impacted, uh, but they turned the corner. And uh, FMCG commentary in the financial papers uh, by the various CEOs uh, attribute to growth in their uh, uh, business forecast, and we hope to uh, you know also grow our business to them in the coming year. Okay, sir. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Dishan Jain from Kosar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Just wanted to ask one uh, question. Uh, what is the volume put for FI24? See, uh, I will not give you the exact number, but there was a, uh, uh, there was a volume growth. And uh, uh, I would leave it at that. It's uh, more of a strategic question in giving an exact number. 
ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू लेडीज एंड चेटमैन दैट वॉज द लास्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर द डे आई वुड नाउ लाइक टू हैंड द कॉन्फ्रेंस ओवर टू द मैनेजमेंट फॉर द क्लोजिंग कॉमेंट्स I on behalf of we would like to express my gratitude to all of you for joining us today and sparing your precious time for us we hope to see you back in our next phone call if you still have any queries and questions you may write to mr bhavesh shah in our investor relation agency that is orient capital thank you ladies and gentlemen and have a good day thank you on behalf of the sukjit starch and chemicals limited that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines